Welcome to the Embraer E175 Systems Video Lighting Module. In this video, we will discuss external lighting, cockpit lighting, cabin lighting, cargo and service compartment lighting, and the emergency light system. We will end with the limitations and abnormal procedures associated with the lighting systems. The external lights on the Embraer E-175 consist of navigation lights, strobe and beacon lights, taxi and landing lights, and the logo and inspection lights. The external lights are all controlled from the lights panel at the bottom of the overhead panel. The navigation, or nav lights, are three different colored lights located at the extremities of the aircraft that help others identify the aircraft extremities in the dark, but also the direction an aircraft is facing based on the colors that are visible. At each wingtip, there are nav lights on the leading edge of the wingtip and the trailing edge. The leading edge has a colored light, green on the right wing and red on the left. On the trailing edge is a white light. Each light actually consists of a pair of identical bulbs, the normal bulb and the standby bulb, protected by a transparent aerodynamic cover. Under normal operations, the normal bulb is operating at each location. In case of a burned out normal bulb, a maintenance switch in the flight deck allows personnel to change the standby bulb circuit. A single switch on the flight deck turns all the navigation lights on and off. Normally the navigation lights are turned on whenever electrical power is applied to the airplane and turned off when electrical power is removed. This provides an external indication to personnel that power is on inside the aircraft. Right beside each pair of leading edge nav lights within the same housing is a strobe light. The strobe lights flash bright white every few seconds and are used to make a plane more conspicuous than the steady illumination of the nav lights. The strobes are turned on by a single switch in the flight deck. They are normally used from takeoff to landing, being turned on during the lineup and turned off after clearing a runway. They are also often used when crossing a runway, especially an active runway, to make the airplane more conspicuous to other aircraft potentially taking off or landing on said runway. It is also important to consider other pilots and personnel when using the strobe lights. The flashes are very bright and can cause pilots to lose their night adaptation if they are taxiing near another aircraft that has its strobes on. So if another aircraft is directly behind, such as in a lineup for takeoff, it is courteous to consider delaying turning on the strobes until having moved a little way from the aircraft that's behind you. Strobe lights can also cause an issue for the crew inside their own aircraft when flying through particularly dense fog or clouds. The strobes are not normally visible from the flight deck, but may reflect off water droplets in these dense conditions and can dazzle and even disorient the pilots. If the strobe lights cause a distraction in the flight deck, they can be turned off during flight until reaching clear air. The red beacon is a pair of lights mounted on the top and bottom of the fuselage near the center of the aircraft. Unlike the white strobes, the flashing of the beacons, while still attention getting, is not as blinding. The red beacon is usually used to indicate that an aircraft is moving or has engines running. The switch for the red beacons is located in the flight deck. It is normally turned on just prior to pushback or engine start, whichever will occur first, and is normally turned off once the engines are switched off and engine speed decreases below a certain threshold, usually 10% N1. The beacon is usually observed by ground crew on arrival and they will not usually approach an aircraft until the beacon is turned off to indicate that the engines are stopped and it is safe to approach the aircraft. The aircraft features taxi lights to aid navigation on the ground in the dark. The primary taxi light is the nose taxi light. It is mounted on the nose landing gear. Additional taxi lights are located on the wing route behind a transparent aerodynamic casing. The side lights are angled and will illuminate the area to either side of the nose, which is mainly useful for making sharper turns. There is a single switch which activates both side lights, and they are either both on or off. The aircraft also features landing lights, which are brighter than the taxi lights and are used to illuminate the runway during takeoff and landing. One landing light is located on the nose gear. The other two lights are located at the wing routes, in the same housing as the side taxi lights. However, unlike the taxi lights, the landing lights in the wing route are aimed straight ahead and to illuminate the takeoff and landing path. Each landing light is controlled by a separate switch on the overhead panel, left, center, and right. It should be noted that the taxi and landing light on the nose gear will automatically shut off when the gear is retracted to avoid creating excess heat in the nose landing gear bay. The tail of the aircraft has two logo lights, one on each side of the tail. 
the logo light is flush mounted within the upper surface of the horizontal stabilizer and is aimed at the vertical stabilizer. The logo light illuminates the vertical stabilizer at night, which is usually painted with the logo of the airline, hence the term logo light. The logo light is controlled by a single switch in the flight deck. Some operators will leave the logo light on at all times, while others will specify it should only be on at night. The inspection light is a pair of lights flush mounted in the fuselage forward of the wing. These lights are aimed at the wing and illuminate the leading edge to allow crew to inspect the leading edge of the wing at night, primarily to check for ice accretion. The inspection lights are controlled by a single switch in the flight deck and used at the crew's discretion. Cockpit lighting is designed to ensure pilots can see all switches and instrumentation in the flight deck and perform their duties. There is a dome light, which is an overhead light on the ceiling of the flight deck. This provides illumination for the entire flight deck using a switch located on the overhead panel and is either on or off with no brightness settings. The dome light, while good for ground operations including ingress and egress, is usually considered too bright to use while flying at night. The panels in the flight deck use backlighting to illuminate the labels and diagrams at night. The panel lights are controlled by three rotary knobs which allow the crew to adjust the brightness of the backlighting on any of the three major panels, the main panel, the overhead panel, and the pedestal. Alternatively, the main panel can also be illuminated by floodlighting located under the glare shield. The floodlighting is divided into a left half and a right half of the main panel, with each half controlled by a knob at each end of the glare shield. A reading light is available to each pilot and to the jump seat observer. The reading lights are located on the ceiling of the flight deck in an eyeball type mount which can be adjusted to aim them precisely where needed for reading checklists, manuals, etc. The reading lights have two concentric adjustment rings on the lights themselves. One ring adjusts the brightness from full off to full bright, while the other ring adjusts the focus of the light, allowing the pilot to illuminate a large area such as a full page of a logbook or just a small area, like just part of a checklist. The final light in the flight deck is the chart light. This light is located just over the side window and shines down to illuminate the chart holder mounted on the bottom of the side window. Each chart light is controlled by a separate knob at the end of the glare shield. Lighting is provided in the passenger cabin for safety and convenience of cabin crew and passengers. There are several different lighting systems located throughout the cabin. All of the cabin lighting can be controlled from the flight attendant panels. There is an overhead light system. These lights are hidden above the overhead storage bins along the length of the cabin and provide a diffuse light that reflects off of the ceiling panels. There is also a very similar sidewall light system. These lights are mounted behind the overhead bins but shine down the cabin sidewalls, again providing a diffuse lighting source along the length of the cabin. There are also overhead lights in the galley and entry areas that are controlled by separate circuits. All of these overall lighting sources can be turned off or on in a bright or dim setting independently of all the other lighting systems. Individually controlled lighting is also provided at each passenger seat in the form of an overhead passenger service unit, or PSU. Each PSU provides lighting as well as a controllable vent for each pair of seats or single seat in the business class section. The light at each seat can be turned on or off on the overhead panel and is aimed at the passenger's lap to allow for reading or other activities. The overall function of the PSUs is controlled by flight attendants and all the units can be turned off or on using the flight attendant panel. A courtesy light switch is also located on each flight attendant's panel. In the auto position, the courtesy light switch will activate the cabin lights in the forward entry area, the forward galley, and the cockpit step light for five minutes after the forward passenger door is opened. This allows the crew, especially the pilots, time to enter a dark flight deck and energize the aircraft electrical system. In the off position, this circuit is disabled. A reset button on the same panel will reset the five minute timer without closing and opening the door again. An additional lighting system is located in the cabin known as the rainbow lights. The rainbow lights are two ceiling mounted panels at the fore and aft end of the cabin featuring five colored lights. These lights are used to communicate information to the flight attendants as shown in this table. Orange, steady, indicates a passenger call from the lavatory, whereas orange flashing indicates smoke has been detected in the lavatory. Blue, steady, indicates a passenger in the cabin has pressed a call button. The PSU that triggered the blue call light will also have a blue light on so that the flight attendants can find the passenger 
that triggered the call button. Red flashing means the flight deck has placed an emergency call to the cabin. Green flashing means the flight deck has placed a normal call to the cabin. In the case of the flashing red or flashing green lights, the lights will stop flashing when the call is answered. Amber steady indicates the sterile switch is selected on in the flight deck. All of the lights on the rainbow panel are accompanied by an audio tone when the light illuminates according to the table shown. This helps draw the flight attendant's attention to the rainbow panel to determine what actions need to be taken. The cargo compartments on the Embraer feature overhead lighting. The forward cargo compartment has five cargo lights and one loading light just inside the door. The aft cargo compartment has three cargo lights with a loading light just inside the door. All the lights are covered by protective grills to prevent them from damage during loading, unloading, and things shifting during flight. The lights in each compartment are controlled by a switch at the door with an auto and off position. In auto, the lights are turned on whenever the corresponding cargo door is open. In off mode, the lights will never illuminate regardless of the door position. Various service compartments also feature lighting to aid with completing tasks in dark compartments or at night. These lights are either controlled by a dedicated switch inside each compartment or a micro switch activated by the door of the corresponding compartment. These lights are available in the refueling panel, the forward and mid electronic bays, the APU compartment, and the rear hydraulic compartment. An emergency light system is provided for the cabin and the flight deck and is designed to guide passengers to the nearest exit in case of an emergency. The emergency lights consist of several different types of lights. There are overhead lights on the aircraft ceiling above the aisle and at each emergency door. There are also illuminated exit identifier signs above and beside each exit and there is also a single overhead light in the flight deck to aid pilots in exiting in an emergency. The emergency lights are powered by four emergency light power units or ELPUs, each with an integral battery. The ELPU batteries are charged by the aircraft electrical system whenever the system is powered and will provide 10 minutes of illumination for the emergency lights once activated. The emergency lights are controlled by a switch in the flight deck and a switch on each flight attendant's panel. If the flight deck switches off, the lights are prevented from illuminating under any circumstances. If the switch in the flight deck is on, all the emergency lights will be turned on. In arm mode, where the switch will spend most of its time, the emergency lights remain off unless the DC buses in the aircraft lose electrical power or all electrical power is turned off in the aircraft. In either of these two cases, the emergency lights will then automatically turn on and remain on until the ELPUs run out of battery power. Additional switches for the emergency lights are provided on each flight attendant panel. These are two position switches. In the off arm position, the lights will be either off or armed depending upon the position of the flight deck switch. The on position will override the flight deck switch and turn on all the emergency lights. In addition to the emergency lighting, the E-175 also features photoluminescent strips to help guide passengers in an emergency. These strips run down either side of the aisle and lead to the emergency exits. These strips do not require any power, but must be recharged by ambient light prior to flight. The strips require 15 minutes of exposure to either daylight or bright cabin lighting, which will then be sufficient for the strips to remain illuminated for seven hours. Continuous exposure to bright lights throughout the day will maintain this charge for operating days greater than seven hours long. It should be noted that all the emergency slides on the Embraer also feature lighting. However, this lighting is not part of the aircraft's emergency lighting system. Instead, each slide features its own battery and lights activate on the slide when the slide is deployed, remaining illuminated for at least 10 minutes until the internal battery discharges. The only limitation related to the topics in this presentation is that Prior to flight with passengers, the crew must ensure the photoluminescent strips in the cabin are charged by 15 minutes of exposure to bright light within the seven hours prior to the end of the flight. There are only a few ICAST messages related to the lighting system, and they all relate to the emergency lights. 
If Emer light not armed appears unintentionally, ensure the emergency light switch is switched to the armed position. If Emer light on appears unintentionally, turn the emergency light switch off and back to arm. If Emer light bat fault appears, this is for crew awareness only. It indicates that the batteries are not sufficiently charged. If this appears at power up, it will usually disappear once the emergency light batteries have recharged slightly. We will now answer some review questions regarding the material covered in this presentation. Try to answer the question before the answer is displayed. Pause the video if necessary to give you the time to answer the question. Let's begin.